the Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and they asked, where is the one they called the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and we have come to worship him. And this is a very relevant question for us today. We look at the store windows and our television screens and something is going on. There's snow globes and icicles with fancy lights and big parties and we ask, where is the king of the Jews? Where is the king? I see lights, I see signs, I follow them. But where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? So personally, I love Christmas. I love it as much as anyone. I love parties and family time, playing Ticket to Ride for days and days on end with my parents and my sister. I love chocolate. I love chocolate stuff in a, in a calendar. And I, love, I love how my mom gives me lottery tickets in my stocking, even though I'm absolutely against the lottery. But it's okay. I think this year I'll get movie vouchers. I, I love cookies. I love cookies. I love stuffing myself with cookies constantly. And it's so much fun. I, I love look, staring at a beautiful Christmas tree in silence or watching cheesy old movies. I love waking up on Christmas morning and waking my sister up. Uh, sometimes it's closer to the afternoon. And we go down and see the tree, and again I realize I got less gifts than her. <laughs> I believe Santa clearly has favorites. I think he knows, I told he knows who's naughty and who's nice. I love Christmas songs. Back years ago, I made a collection of about six mixed CDs and uh, titled The Never Ending Christmas, volumes one to six. And it compiled hours and hours of my favorite Christmas songs like Bing Crosby and Bruce Springsteen and Backstreet Boys, Boys to Men, Sesame Street, The Muppets, The Moffets even, everyone. We literally listen to this collection every year. I think my mom has it in her car seat player. The thing is, with all the fun and games, it's really easy to lose track, and we have to be careful. Be careful, look beyond the distractions this holiday, and cling to the truth of Christ every single day. This is the time to seek out the Savior, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords. Don't be blind. Seek him out. We jumped up too far. All right. Number two, people are disturbed by Jesus. Tragically, we live in one of the most Christian countries in the world. And many will respond in a similar way to verse 3. In verse 3, King Herod says, uh, sorry, King, King Herod, when he heard about Jesus, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. They were all disturbed. The great irony is that Jesus can be a taboo during Christmas. As an experiment, imagine you went around this December dropping the J-bomb constantly at every Christmas party, every Christmas dinner, every sale, every event. To be honest, people would be really bothered, despite that this is a celebration of the coming of Christ. And people should be bothered. Jesus is a hard pill to swallow. He says he is the only way, the only truth. He says that if you do not know him, you do not know God. This is a disturbing thought today in a world of Muslims and Buddhists and atheists and on and on. And it was also a very disturbing thought back in Jesus' time. King Herod did not like the idea that there was a king of the Jews that would unsettle his power and status. And it's not just Herod. In verse 3, says that all of Jerusalem was disturbed by the news that Christ was born. So what about you? How often are we disturbed by the idea of bowing down to the commands of Jesus? How often do we justify and make excuses or reject certain Bible verses for the sake of maintaining control of our lives? For our security, our opinions, our sinfulness, and our fear. The idea of submitting to the authority of Jesus is a very disturbing thought for people, both outside the church and inside the church. Are you disturbed by Christ? Or are you eager to do what the word commands and proclaim the name of Jesus as Christmas? Others will be disturbed, or will you be shaken? The Magi, eager to seek Christ, traveled from the east, followed the star, that led them to the promised king of Bethlehem. In verse 11 it says, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and bowed down to worship him. So 
Point number three. Jesus is the savior of all people. One thing that I find amazing is that the Magi weren't even Jewish. Matthew, a Jew, starts his gospel with revealing God, with God revealing his only begotten son to non-Jews. The Gentiles from the east were searching for the Messiah. They came to Jerusalem, and the Jewish chief priests and teachers were disturbed about the news. Why didn't they volunteer to go worship Jesus with the Magi? Instead, Herod was like, hey, you Magi, you go and find him. Tell me where he is. Come back, and I will secretly plot his death. And it's, it's weird, and I'm shocked time and time again how God shows us that often it's the outsiders who are left out. Sorry, the outsiders who accept Christ, and it's the insiders who are often left out. It's very counterintuitive. God loves his, jo- his chosen Jewish people, but he opens the door and says, all people, all races, all nations can worship my son and be saved from their sin. Across cultures and borders, to the ends of the earth. And 2,000 years later, Christians are proclaiming the holy name of Christ all over the world. It's awesome. But millions and millions of people are still unreached. What role will you play to the nation? Do you respond to the Great Commission? Do you even pray about missions? This Christmas is a time to think about these things. Imagine how much how much it must have enraged the Jewish leaders, waiting for the Messiah, to know that Christ appeared to the Gentiles from the East, and not first to the Jewish, self-righteous, religious people in Jerusalem. Do not assume that just because you are part of a religious community, you are on God's side. Going to church, calling yourself Christian, is not the narrow gate that leads to life. Jesus has warned us, do we love the poor? Do we proclaim the name of Christ? Do we shy away from speaking about the truth to avoid awkwardness or looking weird or standing out? This is a strong warning that we do not become people who are fearful, prideful, entitled, unrepentant, hard-hearted, complacent. Christ is not just for churchgoers. Weep, plead, and pray for the lost. Love and do not become disobedient to the great commission of Jesus Christ this Christmas. The Magi traveled far and took a crazy chance following a star. But they went with the hope of seeing the Messiah. When they got there, they bowed down before him. They brought treasures to offer him, gifts of gold and incense and myrrh. Were their expectations that they had to travel far? That they had to bring treasures to offer? No. The wise men did it because they were driven by a strong desire to adore and worship him, to fall on their faces and give great gifts to Jesus. My final point, number four. We must have a deep desire to worship Jesus Christ. Do you have a deep desire to worship Jesus? The North American church suffers from the complacent, lukewarm, and unrepentant group of churchgoers. We should be giving 100% of our gifts, but often we settle for a much lower offering of time, effort, and money. Not even the traditional 10%. Your heart controls your hands. If your hands are itching to serve more in the cause of Christ, then reach out and do it. Talk to somebody. Find out today how you can serve. If your hands are frozen in fear or excuses as you rely on others to do God's ministry, then this Christmas is a time to look at your heart. Is this a heart of worship? Truly, I find myself also in a constant struggle, to be a bold Christ follower, to love the poor, to serve the church, to be humble, to share the good news to people around me. 